in my lifetime I've taken literally thousands of pictures of prairie dogs. Most of those came as a result of me working on a book about 15 years ago about that species. It was a coffee table book called Prairie Dogs Sentinel of the Plains and I spent a couple of years trying to get photographs of the animal doing just about everything that the animal could do. But looking back to those pictures and trying to find the right pictures to curate for this article, I couldn't find the one that I felt like really epitomized the species in this wide open environment. So I'm in western Oklahoma today trying to look for a prairie dog town where I can get that picture. About a mile from my house there used to be a prairie dog town, but I've flown over it with the drone to see if there's any existence of it still there and they're just all gone. I don't know if disease racked the town or we had a pretty prolonged drought a couple of years ago and I don't know if the drought did them in or what happened. It was a pretty small town, about 10 acres in size, but the fact of the matter is they're just gone. And so I needed to find a prairie dog town that I could get fairly close to the animals to get the kind of shot I'm thinking. And so that brings me to the Wichita Mountain National Wildlife Refuge. The prairie dog is an enigmatic species. Loved by some, but reviled by others, it is an animal that has a complicated history. From the time that the plains were permanently settled, there's been a precipitous decline in their numbers. Once found all over the Great Plains, the prairie dog occupies the same range, but their numbers are significantly lower than historical estimates. Consider this. In 1870, Texas prairie dogs were estimated to cover 56.8 million acres, but by 1998, that number was reduced to 22,500 acres, a 99.96% drop. When I was a teacher at Children's High School, one of our cornerstone projects was to spend about six weeks each spring at a prairie dog town about a mile north of the high school. For scantly an hour each day, students would break up into teams and take the pulse of the prairie dog town and monitor its health over the six or seven years we studied the rodents. With GPS equipment, they would plot the perimeter of the town to study how the size ebbed over the years. From known scientific population analysis, we could extrapolate the estimated number of prairie dogs in the colony and determine their overall forage consumption. We would test the soil to see if prairie dogs had an effect on soil fertility and take grass clippings to see what kinds of impact, both positive and negative, that prairie dogs have on forage quality and quantity. When all the data was collected and analyzed as a whole, the forage data, the soil data, everything, it seems that the prairie dogs had a neutral effect on the health of rangelands where cattle were present. That assessment flies in the face of conventional wisdom. Most who have an opinion will tell you that a prairie dog's effect on rangelands is detrimental. When prairie dogs colonize an area, their incessant digging and burrowing creates habitats for other animals. When the plains were full of prairie dogs, their presence helped maintain a complicated grassland ecosystem that supported the largest concentration of mammals in North America. So photographing the prairie dog is pretty straightforward. Get low and wait for them to do something cool. You know, I never really got that exact picture I was looking for, but the truth is, I never really do. I think it's a search for perfection that motivates me to come back time and time again. But the prairie dog is such a dynamic little species, they're so much fun to watch. 
and it reminds me of what the plains used to be like when you find a small little prairie dog town and you're able to spend a little bit of time and watch them you know i hope in some small ways my article and pictures will raise the awareness of the, of the plight of the prairie dog and at least help conserve what few towns there are left I took a lot of pictures this day and after going through them I picked just four images that I wanted to share in this episode and kind of explain the reasons of why I like them. This first shot is really emblematic of a prairie dog. You know, in order to gain a height advantage and to be able to see a little bit further, oftentimes when they're not foraging they'll sit on the rear end and look out over the town. And it's usually the prairie dogs that are sitting up that first alert the other prairie dogs that there's danger nearby. And that's just one of the defense mechanisms they have. You know, prairie dogs live communally. They don't necessarily, they're not necessarily friendly with each other, but them living in close proximity to one another kind of helps the whole group because more sets of eyes can look for predators and look for potential danger. Again, this next picture, I, I like it because you've got that slice of foreground that's out of focus and you've got that really nice out of focus background. But this is a shot of a prairie dog that's on alert. He's right at the edge of his uh, burrow. So he's kind of keeping a lookout for danger and you know, they're always alert and they're always looking at you. And you can also notice this prairie dog is where this particular subspecies, the black-tailed prairie dog, gets, it, gets its name. You can see the black tip on its tail. Here's a prey dog that's really on high alert. Again, low angle, got a sliver of foreground that's out of focus. You've got a real nice background that's out of focus. It helps that helps the prey dog really stand out against the background. It doesn't make the background or the foreground too busy. But uh, this prey dog is really on high alert, on high alert. And then again, you know, when I say you just have to wait for prey dogs to do something cool, get low and wait for prey dogs to do something cool. You know, that's kind of what I did here again. Another one sitting up, looking really relaxed. Again, took a lot of pictures on this particular shoot, uh, but of the ones I took, these are four of my favorites that, that may make the cut that goes along with this article that I'm doing.